Welcome one and welcome all to the People's Channel. Orchid for Dummies. <laughs> In today's video, Fail Pals, I will be sharing with you how I fertilize my Phalaenopsis orchids midweek in the summertime, but you gotta stay tuned. Welcome all back, foul pals. I want to help you be as economical as you can with the same one gallon of water, okay? So, first and foremost, before we even get to adding the fertilizers into the water, we want to take in consideration the Phalaenopsis orchids that we have, okay, that is going to be in complete moss because moss is going to be nutrient retentive. So you don't want to fertilize this heavily. So I only fertilize complete moss Phalaenopsis once a month, and this is not that once a month. Also, someone asked me how often should you water or fertilize your Phalaenopsis orchids in moss. If your pot does not have is not very ventilated like this, it might take over a week. It might take over a week before it completely dries out. You just saw me water it, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is let it dry out before I place it back into um, its location. And how I'm going to do that is have something for it to sit on with some paper, towel, paper towels that is very water absorbent. And we're just going to let it sit like this, okay? And I place it in front of a fan. Now, I will leave a link to the last video I did showing you how I fertilize my orchids in the summertime where I break it down just a little bit more, okay? I don't want to talk about the same things, okay? But even in this pot where you do have bark, you do not want to soak it, okay? Because this is moss. Okay, this is moss and you can't soak moss, okay? Also, I want you guys to get a chance to look at my moss. Now, this is not good, healthy moss. This is moss that has broken down and needs to be replaced, okay? So, keep that in mind if you start to get root burn, okay? Moss is going to be nutrient retentive. Stay tuned up on the watering before we add fertilizers. It's going to be your orchids that is in bloom. Now, yes, mama does have a popular video showing you how to fertilize your orchids that is in bloom. But once you only have one bud left, maybe even two, you want or is completely um, open, you want to go ahead and stop fertilizing. Okay, because if you keep fertilizing, it's going to throw it into another season. Okay, so if you have this brand new orchid, okay, right here, I've had this orchid for a little over a week and still have not had to water it. Now, I told my foul pals to check the weight of the pot. It will be very light, okay, very light when it's time to repot it. Now, this is not very light, and it's actually a little water on the bottom. So, I'm not going to water it at all, okay? I'm going to let this type of setup get completely dry before I actually give it some pure rain water, okay? So, the video that I did is going to be applicable for, um, for your um, orchids that's in spike, Okay, and that is budding. But in this video, I'm just breaking it down a little bit more so no one gets confused. Now, this is an uncidium, and uncidiums you have to soak. So I'm going to let this baby soak, and then I'm going to show you how I mix my midweek fertilizing regime. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks for staying tuned, foul pal. So I have let this baby soak for about 10 minutes. As you can see, the roots have turned green. That's how I know it's time to remove her from the water, okay? And I'm going to let her soak as well because this water at the bottom of the pot is what causes most people to have root rot. Also, I wanted you to have the opportunity 
to see what good looking moss appears to look like, okay? This is good moss, okay? It should be bright in color. Also, moss that is no longer good has a foul smell to it, okay? Stay tuned. Hey, Val Pals, one last tip and trick. Don't forget to water your healthiest orchids first and your sickest, sickest orchids last, okay? Because they might have a OTD, orchid transmitted disease. We don't want to transfer it to another orchid pod. No, no, so, no. Welcome, welcome, welcome on back, pal pals. Welcome back. Now, in the last video, you saw me use um, Better Grow Orchid Plus, okay? I will leave a link to that video, okay? But in today's video, what I am using midweek to fertilize my orchids only in the summertime is going to be some cow magic to provide extra calcium and magnesium. In addition to that, I am going to be using the tablespoon of Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate as well. So my orchids will have strong um, cell walls as well as beautiful green foliage, okay? So what I do first is shake it up really well Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, okay? And although this is a large jug, you will need something to measure one milliliter. Now, you guys know I'm a strong advocate for Walmart. I love them. Yes, I do. That one milliliter. So, this is one milliliter. This is one milliliter, guys. A little dab of do you. That's what I always tell you. A little dab of do you. Boop. <laughs> All right, foul pal, pal. So let's go ahead and make sure that it is going to be well diluted into the water. Okay, before we add the tablespoon of Epsom salt. Okay. Now we're um, fertilizing high in nitrogen. Okay, at the beginning of the week and during the middle of the week. We're making sure that it's getting magnesium and it's getting um, more of that calcium, okay? If you did not know, um, having a lot of calcium will also help manage those pests, those orchid pests, because strong cell walls will prevent bugs from penetrating it, okay? Who loves a little penetration? Can I get an amen up in here? So, yes, that's a lot of um, Epsom salt, okay, but I have been using it, and it has been working wonders for me, okay? And don't forget that this is rainwater that I'm using, so it's very pure, okay? Now, this is just how I mix it. You guys already know that I let my orchids soak, okay? So, for instance, I give it like a minute. And then I just let the orchids just soak inside of it, okay? And that's going to be orchids that is predominantly in a bark setup, okay? And that it has to be ventilated, darling. It has to be. So you already know after the orchid, after the orchid soaks, the next thing I'm going to do is let it sit somewhere and dry off. And I'm going to make sure no water is between the leaves and definitely no water inside of the crown. Well, Fal Pals, I hope that I was able to help you. I hope that you guys are fertilizing your orchids now because you will not be able to fertilize it heavily in the winter. Well, Fal Pals, have a happy growing until next time.